Welcome to another episode of the United States of Movie Podcast. We're the podcast that makes every Monday a fun day because we love to get into movies, but not for no reason whatsoever. We are the podcast where we try to define each state in these United States by just one movie. It's far too big a problem to tackle by myself. My name is Oli Pettigrew. I'm a movie fan. I used to host movie shows for HBO and Cinemax back in Asia. Basically used to make fun of movies. That's what we like to do here while at the same time appreciating them for what they are. Couldn't do it without my amazing co-host though. First of all, let's go to our resident movie nerd. He lives at all times inside a video store right now. In fact, he's the owner of the last blockbuster in the world. Will Hirsch, <laughs> welcome back to the show, buddy. Thank you. It's great to be here. Uh, I actually don't own the store. They just locked the door and I haven't been able to get out for 10 years. So <laughs> that's uh, that was like a Tom someone Hanks. please send help. Yeah, that was like a Tom it's, Hanks like, it's like the terminal. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, except for instead of Catherine Zeta-Jones, yeah. it's a large rat. That, you just uh, go through that beaded section in the back all the time, though. <laughs> yeah, well, that's, you know, obviously that's the best place to live, you know, True. the most privacy. Uh, and of course, we couldn't have uh, this podcast without Ryan Sandler making some brilliantly sarcastic jokes. You Ryan, could. Welcome back you could try. Show. You could try. Yeah, no, it's great to be here. I, I, I think I had a pre-apology written from our last episode, but uh, no, nothing, nothing untoward. Everything was a okay. G-rated. We're all good. Go. Everything's moving forward. You haven't been cancelled yet. Now, for uh-huh. this particular episode, we're returning to a state. Um, A very small state, the smallest state actually in the United States, Rhode Island. Uh, We tackled it a few years ago, a few years, a few weeks ago. Oh my gosh. It feels like like years. It seems like it, yeah. (laughs) Uh, But in this particular case, we have a resident Rhode Islander who's joining us on the show uh, to, one, tell us what it's actually like, and two, he also brought a movie to scare the ever-living shit out of me. Please welcome to the show comedian, actor, and writer, Matt McCarthy. Welcome to the show, mate. Well, hello there. Hello! Are you in Rhode Island right now? No. Where do you? Where are you right now? Los Angeles. With a, and it's surrounded by VHS tapes, as I can see. Uh, so mm. you are, um, uh, by the looks of it, by the sounds of it, and from the videos that you can catch of you, a uh, massive, massive movie nerd. What, you know, what's your relationship with movies? Oh, man, I love them. I, I watch them. Um, on occasion, I get to be in them. And I also have somehow managed to convince some people to send them to me and and then i watch them and review them uh so i just think it's they're the best yeah i noticed that your your wall looks um very much like my wall did growing up uh in the 1980s it's wall-to-wall vhs tapes do you just not like blu-rays no no there's 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 blu-rays over there oh my gosh (laughs) that's incredible Uh, there's 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 four walls of every in every room so for you, there's just it's just movies like for like us. You just love to relax. You're like you're a big fan. It's just there's no particular reason. It's just that's the way you grew up. Um, I mean, I love anything that I can, you know, I I, I love anything. I, I love pro wrestling. Mm. Um, I love TV shows. I mean, I love it, it, odd instructional videos. I just got winning casino craps in the mail. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna crack this wide open. Hell yeah. So um, the next time we see you, you're gonna be just loaded. Just I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna be wearing big sunglasses and act like I don't know you guys. Just, just, be, we could all remake the hangover, but in Atlantic in Atlantic City. I'm gonna be doing like to security to get you three to get away from me. <laughs> High roller tracks, style. If I had a nickel for every time I heard someone say that. Yeah. The story oh, of my that. life. You used to do you you did some writing for WWE. You actually wrote for wrestling for a while. Yeah, yeah. I did two different stints, two different runs, um, 2011 to 2012, and then I moved out to L.A. This is when I was on the East Coast. I left Rhode Island for college in the late 90s and then lived in New York City for about 15 years. During that time, I I started doing stand-up, started acting, and then I wrote on various different things and then did a year with WWE, lifelong wrestling fan, moved out to L.A., um wrote on you know a couple other things and then uh was then asked to come back to wwe as a 
consultant, basically they were like, look, you can stay in LA, do comedy, and you don't have to come to TV and get yelled at by Vince. And I said, that's the deal I've been <laughs> mm -hmm. holding out for. <laughs> that's the that dream. For another two years. Yeah. What's that like? I mean, what's that like writing for wrestling? I mean, you know, pins him, taps him out the end. You know, it's like, how does this how does this work? I, also, you're telling me that wrestling's not real? Hang on. Uh, well, <laughs> as Jesse Ventura said to a reporter once, if I pick you up and body slam you on the ground, did you imagine that? <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's choreographed. Um, but th they are they aren't trying to hurt each other. But the uh, the the writing is is very um, well. I mean, I only did it under Vince, so I can't speak to what it's like now. But as a fan watching, it clearly seems much more cohesive. Much um, also, both times I was at WWE was after mass firings. So like, I was always there on a much smaller writing team, a much m smaller creative team, uh, as opposed to like 30 or 40, or I don't even know how many people are had been involved or were involved. But I mean, so when I was there, it was very much try to map out as far advanced in, in storylines that we could for different um, uh, wrestlers. But the, the the fact of the matter was, is it was um, running around sticking your thumb in, you know, leaks in the dam because Vince was tearing up scripts and changing his mind. And, mm -hmm. uh, you know, and th that was the biggest X factor. The other thing is it's it's a live show. So things go wrong. People get hurt. People miss planes. I remember one time uh, Chris Jericho did something with maybe a Mexican flag or we were in some country. Oh. And he did something with the flag and then he got in trouble. So then he was suspended. It was always, you know, you didn't know somebody fails a drug test. I mean, it's just like there's a constant tornado of change always around there, at least when I was there. It's like a daytime soap opera with more steroids. Well, it's more like <laughs> SNL if it's in a different say, city yeah. every single oh, yeah. week with no reruns and no off season. And Lauren right. Michaels is an even bigger lunatic alpha like right i did a pilot once for i forget what the show was but it was it was um uh one of the eps was hugh fink who uh brilliant stand-up and writer and he wrote at snl the first time dwayne johnson hosted and vince was there and he was he just cornered me and was fascinated he just wanted to know everything about vince mcmahon because he was like we the writers on snl they were like we had never seen anyone out alpha lorne before like he came into the lorne meeting and took over like <laughs> vince just started running the lorne meeting and like lorne wow. just kind of sat back and if you watch that first dwayne johnson snl it's not the rock it's not one of the other wrestlers it's not one of the snl cast members that says live from new york at saturday night it's vince yeah he just bullied his way in and was like, oh, right. let me explain comedy to you pal Oh my God. He's like, cut, print, move on. Show's and over. We're as, done. As someone who grew up in that 90s, like, attitude era of watching, like, Stone Cold, Triple H, and The Rock, like, that's mm -hmm. such an all consuming part of our collective, like, teenage boy lives that it was such a huge deal. I mean, you couldn't miss a SmackDown or a Raw. Like, that was, that was our everything. That was our, our soap opera. Like, we just, we were glued to these stories. Like, where could it go? So it's so fascinating to hear the correlation to like a Saturday Night Live. That was the first thing I thought of. What was like, wow, to be able to, to keep track of all of these characters and storylines and then to be able to pivot on a dime is, yeah, it must have been so nerve wracking. If, if that doesn't boil down America, in, in, especially when it comes to politics, it doesn't need to be real. It just needs to be entertaining. It's, yeah, <laughs> it's so much. American politics has become like wrestling in so many ways. It's unreal. Oh, not no, enough, I, I, not I, enough hell in the cell matches, but you know, but pretty, yeah. pretty the close. Debates would be a lot more entertaining. I want to see Biden yeah. like rise up like the Undertaker. Oh, that is <laughs> sick. <laughs> hell yeah, see, that that's, is, that's, that's how he starts every morning. He sits up. <laughs> they, 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 they give him the, the pads, they shock him awake, and then he sits up. <laughs> hell yeah, as so they see, should. Now Who's I'm that? into politics. Now, now I'm interested. Who's so his Paul Bearer? Yeah, cool. see, that's another thing, right? But then, guess, as a super well, fan, writing WWE, there you go. But how do you, as a super fan, we like? I, do you have any 
are you shepherded? Do you have any control of any way to go, this is my favorite wrestler and I'm going to give him some gold right now? Or are you just mm. delivering what you've been ordered to do? Um, I, yes and no. I mean, I mean, put it this way. It, most of the time, I remember one of the writers who had been there for a long time, we were at TV and he's like, so, so what are you this week? Are you a, uh, a transcriber or are you a, I forget what the other thing, but it was just like, it's, it's, it's Vince had the final say on everything. And it would always be hilarious when people on Twitter or Reddit would blame the writers mm. and you're like, yeah, yeah. Blame the guy who wrote down what Vince said to say word for word. <laughs> Yeah. Um, they're the ones killing the business, sure. But the um the, the only times I was able to get my own, you know, personal uh I don't know what, you know, the things that I just wanted to see on the TV, I would pitch things all the time and always as a fan being like, This would be awesome if we could do this. And uh the the like there was one time Ryback was just wrestling nameless uh local guys just 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 nameless job guys every single week and so one week i figured out a way to to and we get we could name them whatever we wanted so i named them two friends from college uh brendan burke and dane barone and i knew that rap uh, uh, vince loved watching white people rap um <laughs> Who so <doesn't? laughs> I, so i was like if i can incorporate their names into the rap i was just trying to figure out a way that like once it got to tv their names wouldn't change because it was just you know right. the nature of, of 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 the beast and then the only other time i was like i really pushed for um like when we were leading up to raw 1000 i was like can we recreate um because we were doing a gimmick where uh heath slater was getting pummeled by a different legend every single week on raw and I was like really pushing to recreate um, when Roddy Piper smashed the the gold record over Captain Lou's head in the 80s and, and Cindy Lauper was going to be there. And I was like, we should do a thing where uh, he, you know, R Roddy wants to make amends and he, he gives her a record to make up for the one that he broke. And then they smash it over Heath Slater's head and. Um, the only, the, the thing that I was most proud of was I, my, my favorite memory of wrestling when I was a kid was there's, there's this montage of Hulk Hogan training Mean Gene Okerlund for a wrestling match. And I was like, if, if we can somehow recreate that and the, the closest we got, we did a retro raw or a retro SmackDown or something. And it was like Sheamus and Mean Gene were going to have to wrestle in a tag match together. And it was you know, I, I got to recreate that, you know, that favorite memory of 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 childhood wrestling watching. That's so awesome. like stuff like that. I would just throw in stuff like that or, you know, that's fun. I mean, like yeah. you know, as kids were all like yeah. playing with toys. You actually got to play with the real toys. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, look, this is for real. <laughs> so here you are also a resident Rhode Islander. All right. So so we are here to get some just some insight from a real Rhode Islander when it comes yeah. to to these movies. Uh, it's a very, very small state. I live in Texas. I live in the opposite of Rhode Island. So we had some questions. Honestly, really, what's it like growing up in Rhode Island? Is it why are there? So, what's up with all the witches? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, New England, you know, I, I, but I'll, I mean, I, I never thought about it till now but like rhode island was based like it was founded on religious freedom so it makes the most sense that witches would go there um you know uh, roger williams uh they let it, it was all people who were sick of the puritans in connecticut and then they founded rhode island so it was like it was a safe haven for um religious freedoms like like the oldest synagogue in the country is in rhode island no way um, absolutely. Yeah. It was the first safe haven for Jewish people in, in the United States. Um, so it, I guess it makes sense that even, even the evil witches of Eastwick would be, you know, <laughs> practicing their, their witchcraft there in, in, in beautiful scenic Narragansett Bay. Yeah, so the, our last episode, yeah, we had um, we was a little bit of a Farrelly Brothers episode because, unfortunately, of yeah. many of the movies made in Rhode Island, a lot of them are Farrelly Brothers movies. 
So we sure. had myself for Unfortunately. Like really, we had yeah. uh, Osmosis Jones and we had The Witches of Eastwick. But by far, the movie that consumed our souls that week was The Witches of Eastwick. Have yeah. you seen that movie, George Miller's bonkers movie? Yeah, I, I, I haven't watched it recently. I mean, I remember when I did watch it, I was like, this isn't that great. Um, and what, it, does it take place in Newport? Is that... Well, it just, it actually, it takes place in a fictional town. Yeah. It's yeah. just a town mm-hmm. in Rhode Island. It's very non-specific about it. So that's kind yeah. of like, that was a little ding against it that we were like, well, you could have put it anywhere in New England. It's not full on Rhode Island, but it's... Yeah, usually if there's something with like mansions, it's it's going to, they're going to, like, like meet Joe Black, that mansion he lives in is in Newport. Um, and then, and then a lot of the mansion, well, not a lot of them, but like several that I can think of are like owned by like the diocese of the Catholic church in Rhode Island. And they just kind of rent them out for events or for, for filming, obviously. Eyes wide shut. Um, Huh? Eyes wide shut. (laughs) Was that Rhode Island? Oh no, that was all in England. (laughs) But I put the Catholic church on, I'd give him money for for probably renting there for that. But uh, so it's just mansions. You in the basement of your mansion right now, does everyone in Rhode Island just live in a mansion? Um, no. (laughs) <laughs> New, Newport was a hub in the molasses triangle and that's like where all that money came from um but then the rest of the state is very um it's it's a it's obviously because it is so small it's very densely populated and it's got a, a little bit of everybody um and it's it's also one of the test product states uh, because of its dense population. So like something like Crystal Pepsi, when that you know went into test markets, Rhode Island was one of the places where it was, um, things like that. But yeah, as far as movies go, I mean, I know that they were, especially when I was in high school, I remember they were making a push for more kind of you know incentives for movies being shot there. They had more resources like Amistad shot at least exteriors there for because the 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 state house uh in rhode island in providence looks very much like the the capital in um dc so some of the exterior shots of anthony hopkins walking down the steps was were shot there and you know and then like you mentioned the fairley brothers or like michael carenti you know people who grew up filmmakers who grew up in rhode island have based movies there um Michael Carenti did, you know, uh, Federal Hill, which was about the Federal Hill neighborhood in Providence or American Buffalo. He shot that there in Pawtucket, I think, with Dustin Hoffman and Dennis Franz. So it's there's always something happening for sure. That's so cool. So yeah. what I like to say, especially when it comes to picking the movies for a state, I, I always say go with the gut. So when you heard we were doing this podcast about Rhode Island, you thought, OK, a movie about Rhode Island. What was your absolute, your go-to, your gut reaction? Was it the movie that you chose? Um, I mean, Fairly Brothers usually come to mind quickly, especially Dumb and Dumber, because it's the first time that I ever recall, you know, the big blue bug being in a motion picture on, um, w- when you come off of 195 and come on to 95 South, I mean, I guess you can see it from 95 North as well, but... Uh, along the highway is a giant blue insect, which is advertising, I think, New England pest control. Uh, and it's been there my whole life, and it's probably been there for, you know, I don't even know how many decades. Um, but it, 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 that was it. And it was fun seeing it in a movie theater because I think some people didn't realize it was set in Rhode Island or certainly like something about Mary. Mm-hmm. Remember when we saw that in the theater? And so, so a character mentioned Barrington. I remember a woman a few rows away goes, "What, B- Barrington?" <laughs> Lady. Um, but like, I, you know, another fairly actually no, it. I think the, I think Peter Fairley wrote it. Um, I don't know if it was Peter or Bobby, but I think Michael Carenti directed Outside Providence. Um, and that one's also a lot of fun, just because you know, I mean, it's the characters in it and, and Alec, it's one of my favorite Alec Baldwin performances, but that that's more Pawtucket. Um, but I, I think as far as Rhode Island goes, my mind would go to a Fairly Brothers movie like that for sure. And yet yeah. 
you felt the need to go instead for my worst possible scenario. Um, as people that listen and watch the podcast know, I hate scary movies. Not my jam. Not my horror. So, um, do you, do what, fair, what, to what be don't fair, you like about it? Yeah, I, I'm a pussy. I just, I guess, like as a small child, like my dad uh-huh. would bring VHSs, like you know, from the movie store to keep us entertained because you know, children of the '80s. And it's like, here you go. There's this sort of car chase movie. What's it called? Mad Max. Oh, this is fun space movie. What's it called? Aliens. I'm fucking nine. Yeah. You know? So I just feel like I've got this collective trauma of my childhood that I get the shit scared out of me by scary movies. And honestly, it's also since the world kind of became a hellhole that mm-hmm. I, I like to sort of find, I like movies to be something that make me feel good. Yeah. <laughs> and so horror movies, they just shit me up. And so all really. week he's been trying to get us to watch Aquaman 2. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, and truly up until, horrifying up until recent up until recently the only scary movie he'd seen is Ernest scared stupid <laughs> <laughs> which is horrifying for yeah. completely different which, unfortunately talking. did not win no we, we I mean, watched what the irony is is like if you go to like a horror convention or monster palooza it's like the people who are horror fans or the people who make horror movies are the sweetest people um, there is a strange, like it's, 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 it's something to do with, I don't know, this is, I don't, I'm not a, I'm not a doctor, but <laughs> it's just this idea of being in control of the awful thing, um, and using it as entertainment, as opposed to the actual horrors of real life. Um, but no, I mean, I get it. I mean, I, I, I feel like the last time I was really frightened from a movie would have been either after, and this is, this is like, I'm a, I'm a teenager. I remember after like scream or maybe even as late as like Blair witch project. So I would have been like 18 or 19. I remember just being home alone in the dark afterwards and just being like, yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta get over this dude. Just having, I like literally having that conversation with myself. Um, and then a ball comes bouncing out of the shadows. <laughs> oh, yeah. now we're talking. That's yeah, so my, funny. It's you get twisted up on like, I remember, I think my first like scare experiences was I had an older, I have an older brother, and growing up, he would just force these horror films down my throat. And I was, which I was far too young to watch, like a child's play or something. I was maybe like six mm-hmm. or seven. I was like, whoa, this is not, this is not for me. And then I remember like later on in life, like sneaking into his room and he had like Fangoria and just scrolling through all that. So I loved all that stuff. But the distinct poor memory I have was watching um, uh, Pee Wee's Big Adventure when Large Marge turns. And that was, mm. that still stuck with me. I'm like, holy shit, that's the craziest jump scare. <laughs> I love it now. Like, Yeah, Will but, can't get enough of him. At least they, yeah, I think the only horror movie we've had on, we've had a couple, right? We had the... Was it? Bar- the, oh, the I, we watched Barbarian. Yeah. Barbarian is. Oh, Barbarian was good. Yeah. yeah if you've um, not seen that one, Matt. It's like it's. I think I've seen the Disruptors. Like I saw Cabin in the Woods. I find to be a mm-hmm, fantastic yeah. sort of movie that essentially just makes all other horror movies irrelevant by explaining so all horror movies, and it kind of pushes people to be a little more inventive. And I found Barbarian. If you haven't seen that, is a, it's a very entertaining. Um, and different sort of like approach to a horror movie, then I'm like, all right, okay, I can appreciate that. Whereas I, this... I just, I just did uh, the the same the, the same production team uh, from Barbarian. I was just in a a it, it'll I don't know when it's coming out, but I'm in uh, their next movie, Companion, um, which was a lot of fun. Nice. nice. Is I'm that a horror movie? That. It's um. I think more sci-fi Jack Quaid uh, starring in it nice. um, and Matt McCarthy. <laughs> <laughs> I have a very small right up there on the poster. I have a very, have a very It's your part. face and then Jack Quaid is very small. <laughs> <That's> Killed <right>. immediately. <laughs> um, That's awesome. Yeah, I, that yeah we've covered Krager's a few. Next movie? Is that to the next one he's working on? Is that Which one? Is that Zach Kreger's next movie? I forgot. I remember he announced. He's it. one of the producers on it. He's he's not to oh, nice. uh, I, I the uh, the writer and director is is different from Barbarian. Nice. 
So what, is that, what is the movie, or why don't you introduce it to the audience, what movie did you select to represent the state of Rhode Island oh, to right. the entire world? <laughs> oh, well, The Conjuring. I think it's probably, when I look at the list of movies set or shot in Rhode Island, I think it probably well ranks among, about, probably at the top. Yeah. It, uh, yeah. Yes, and there was a lot of them as well. So uh, 2013's The Conjuring, um, starring Patrick Wilson, Vera Farmiga, uh, Lily Taylor, Ron Livingston. It's also got uh, Murphy from Interstellar, uh, Mackenzie Foy, and uh, also from The Dark Knight Rises, Joey King, who we had on the show with White House Down. So um, it's directed by James Wan. Did you select that because you recently played Aquaman? Uh, did you watch that video? Uh, that's right. That's right. I, I was recently <laughs> fired by Batman as Aquaman. It's always fun being in... It's so funny because I have... You can put all the makeup in the world on me, but if you do anything to my eyebrows, people who have known me since childhood are like, wait, is that you? Mm. Um, so the, the, the Jason Momoa uh, getup was uh, very uh, uh, effective. Because... It was impressive. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. Very impressive. And the thing is, Momoa does have very sort of interesting um, eyebrows. And when you put that little thing on, I'm like, you're, even, you're making the faces. That I'm like, I was watching it too, just going, wait a minute. I double, double checked. I go, is this the same guy? <laughs> How did they get yeah. Momoa? Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's yeah cool. those sketches, and even going back like earlier when you uh, used to do for College Humor, I, it's still the one with you uh, where you're Jim Gordon. And uh, it's where you guys, it, he accidentally like reveals he's Bruce Wayne and he's like going off screen and he's got like the mat. Like, that's one of the funniest sketches I've ever seen. I still quote that <laughs> to <great>. this day. <laughs> oh, good. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Me and Pete Holmes and Orrin Brimmer, we would make those with um, uh, front page films. And then we, it, it, it was interesting because we would, um, we had the idea of the the first, the Batman vanishing. And we were like, well, it's not going to work if we don't have a good Batman suit. And then one of us was like, why don't we, we we're all buddies with college humor why don't we pitch it to them, just have them pay for it. And so then we shot the first one and then nice. it became like the most viral video they ever had on their site. Uh, so then they were like, well, let's, let's keep making more. And then, you know, college humor isn't, uh, they lost their car corporate backing and it's not, yeah. it's not what it once was. So uh, me, Pete and Orrin were like, well, and this is, you know, uh, a, over a long period of time, we were like, well, let's figure out, how we can just make it ourselves and not, you know, go completely broke because it's, you know, it needs to look good. Um, and they came out fantastic and we're very, very proud of them. So, they, yeah, you can see them on Pete's, uh, Pete Holmes's uh, YouTube right now. Uh, even yeah. this, uh, one of my favorite ones is the one where it's just when he's trying to find the Batman voice is one of my favorite ones. That, that one of the originals. And it's going I was hanging voice. upside down for nine minutes straight for that one. <laughs> and when we finally cut uh, the stunt coordinator, who was not, didn't, didn't fill me with a lot of confidence. Um, he goes, I have never seen anybody hang upside down for that long before ever in my life. And I go, then why did you let it happen? <laughs> yeah. It's, it sounds like a bad thing to make note of, but uh, <laughs> Jesus you just wanted to Christ. see where it could go, you know, so write it up. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, my missus still quotes that one. We're we're just be, I'm better, I'm stronger. Um, but let's get into let, let's get into the conjuring um, because, well, this movie I feel like they just decided to find everything because this is a pretty busy movie. It does have um, a murder dolls, murder demons. There's a murder basement. Um, there's a murder tree, a murder cupboard with a murder toy, murder witches. There's a child murder, which is one of Ryan's favorite things. Uh, when it comes to movies, the murder of a child. Only in the opening scene. The Only opening in scene. the opening scene, if it's not later. Um, yeah. But there's even an evil Narnia cupboard. Um, yeah. There's murder birds. This this movie just... It's Got like it all, they, baby. They gave us everything. They, yeah. they really did. So, like, for, for it was my first watch. Have you guys all seen The Conjuring before? Or is anyone else on a first watch? Yeah, I'd seen this movie a while back, but I never got swept up in, like, the whole like the ethos of like there's like nine movies like you have the the conjurings the annabelles the nuns the i don't know if insidious is part of this i honestly have no idea if oh, it's like a box set no okay the barbie movie they're all kind of tied yeah. no. it is confusing that patrick wilson is in that's what like, i'm saying two like very <laughs> recent horror franchise yeah. Yeah. also directed by james wan and so, right. so right. 
I can understand the, the crossover event of the season <laughs> that no, no one no. was asking for. But like Matt, you've yeah. seen this one before. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. This this movie's great. Yeah, I enjoyed what it. About you, will you? Is this just one of your? <laughs> no, this is a. So I, I was texting the guys. Um, I had seen this. I don't think I saw this in theaters, um, but I saw it pretty quick after. A friend was having a movie party. Came to watch it. I fell asleep part way through, uh, so I, I I didn't I missed it kind of then. And then I think a couple years ago, uh, back when I first moved out here to LA, some friends were watching it again, and I was also again struggling to stay awake. I I'm one of the few. I find this movie incredibly boring. How? Um, I don't know. There's <laughs> there's something. There's nothing there's like something... the screams of small children that sends you off to a peaceful sleep. <laughs> I mean, sleep. that's how that's you know people. Yeah. Some people have a white noise machine. I just put on kids screaming in yeah. horror films, and then I'm right out. <laughs> yeah. No, um, I just head down no, to the basement. <laughs> yeah, I I don't know. There's something yeah. about like supernatural movies, and especially when it's yeah. more like anything to do with exorcism or stuff. My brain just checks out, and I'm, I'm like, kind okay. of the same way. It's hard. There are exceptions. There are supernatural horror movies I can get into. I love like Exorcist one and three. Yeah. Um, Stigmata. Uh, Stigmata. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, Ghostbusters. Any you know the best uh, supernatural <laughs> horror movies. Um, Suspiria is actually the last one supernatural horror film I saw that I really loved. Hmm. But for most times, I don't know. It, it's just my brain just looks at it just kind of checks out really and so it was was hard for me to get into it i stayed awake this time though religious horror for me is like a a horror subgenre that i've never been a huge fan of like outside of the exorcist but i did enjoy this movie but the whole time i this one the one thing this movie is missing for me was like the fun like it's a very serious almost 70s homage like a a poltergeist type of thing whereas like a malignant which is another james wan film is fucking hilarious and i love it like that it, it's so absurd that i want more of them whereas this was like very serious well that that screenwriter too is akila cooper and she's like she's tapped into something where she like she really gets like the fun of these movies like she she wrote megan as well no, yeah. um so i i think she's like that secret sauce ingredient where she yeah. like she really gets this genre mm-hmm. well look um i'm a giant pussy and i had about 14 days to watch this movie and i watched it yesterday at two in the afternoon with the wind like making sure there was light in the room and my missus she she doesn't do horror either uh missus um she has more she doesn't believe in ghosts but has more ghost stories than anyone i've ever met some of which were in this movie by the way i'm like oh great but there's two things she does fuck with, and that's dolls and demons. And the first five minutes of this movie is just that creepy goddamn Annabelle doll. And she's trying to support me emotionally, but she's like, nope, good luck, Ollie. Enjoy this movie. I will see you tomorrow. This just the opening of this movie shot me right the hell up. I mean, that Annabelle doll is truly nightmare fuel. I have to be honest. Nightmare fuel. I don't know about Matt, you're just like, nah, it's fine. I don't so much <laughs> so that they made three movies revolving around her. <laughs> yeah, this is, uh, I mean... I I'm the complete opposite. I I find like I like Psycho. I like Silence of the Lambs, but outside yeah. of that when it's just it's just a guy murdering people, I'm like who gives a shit? Yeah. Um <laughs> I way prefer supernatural stuff. I think it's far more interesting because it's like who knows? Who knows? Yeah. You know, who's to say what what's out there and what isn't there or like you're 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 messing with things you don't understand, you know, type of stuff as opposed to just call the cops. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we did I think we did, just arrest him. <laughs> the one we overlooked, we did the skeleton key too, which I which I enjoyed kind of has that voodoo kind of horror aspect. I mean, they uh-huh. shit the bit at the ending, but Oh I, yeah, I, it was another I one we completely did. forgot about that one. Was that I, Louisiana? I, I think we did. It looked like the same house, to be honest. It's like it was just the Forrest Gump house. <laughs> yeah, but like, sorry. yeah, and then that's the, that's the other thing is this is you know Ed and Lorraine Warren, real people. Are they were well? I guess they're both dead. Were they fakes? Were they legit? Who knows? I mean, it's just it I, it it's. Yeah. I enjoy the there's an ambiguity to supernatural stuff and then it's like oh well this is based on a real story this was a farmhouse in rhode island and it's like and i've heard plenty of ghost stories of you know old i mean not just old new england like 
buildings, but it's just like the old colonials in Rhode Island. It's just like I've I have the first hand stories of like, yeah, no, <laughs> don't go in that house type of thing. Yeah. There you um, go. I got questions because I was looking up the actual house um mm -hmm. that this movie is sort of the story that is based on. The actual house documented uh, the eight families that lived there, there were two suicides, poisoning, a rape and murder of an 11 year old, two drownings and four people froze to death. What's going on in Rhode Island, man? It sounds kind of dangerous. And sounds the fact kind of, of dangerous. Yeah. And, it, and I read in Rhode Island, you don't have to claim that anything happened in that. Yes, you <laughs> do not have to disclose like, any uh, disclose any of the murders that happened in your house. You can just yeah. sell it as is. This and is it's funny. I just recently watched uh, Night Swim, which was a very fun kind of horror film. And uh, the same thing kind of happens. They move into this house and the, the realtor is like, nope, nothing happened here. Totally A-OK. -okay. <laughs> it's just got chalk outlines on the yeah. walls. And They're shit, like, like oh, no, we, we built a pool over an ancient burial ground again. <laughs> They're just literally carrying a body out of the foyer. And they're yeah. like, what's that? Don't worry. Yeah, That's yeah, just, yeah, yeah, yeah. the neighbors are silly around He's here. He's sleepy. Yeah. It was yeah. kind of poltergeisty, this movie. Yeah, yeah very I mean, poltergeisty. Mm -hmm. Because I guess, yeah, Rhode Island, you guys are East Coast. You are older, old sort of colonials. So you've got you've got this sort of history. So was there a house in your neighborhood, Matt? Was there what was the murder house in your neighborhood? His house. There, yeah, <laughs> there. it's still there. There was a. Um, when when it, it's this colonial, old colonial in the woods um, in Rumford, Rhode Island, and when my brother was a kid, he delivered newspapers to this house and everybody thought the family that lived there was weird because um, there was this whole whole house, this whole colonial house that they didn't live in. There was an addition on the back of the house and they just lived in this small section and they said it was just easier to heat that way. Um, and when that family finally moved there was this whole there was a there was a guy who was i don't remember what he did for a living but he was rich and he, he was devil? buying up huh <laughs> was he the was devil he? did he look like jack nicholson by any chance? yes it was satan himself <laughs> and so he uh had built this big mansion like this modern like eyesore had bought like it, the 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 town of rumford was mostly uh like basically one farm and then there was, uh, if you've ever heard of Rumford baking soda, there was a factory and then it slowly got built up over time. And then the, the, the rest of this, this land near, um, the Seekonk reservoir, right, right near Seekonk, Massachusetts, um, along the Seekonk river, this guy was buying up a bunch of the land and had put in this big modern, uh, kind of eyesore that, you know, a lot of the families weren't into, but then it became this whole thing where he was then selling that. And then they were moving into the old colonial and then somebody else was moving into the other house. So it was like these three real estate deals all happening at once. And all of a sudden, one day, uh, the wife, uh, his wife was like, I, I want out of the deal. I don't want to move into this colonial house. And which was like the, the wheels are in motion. Money's being moved. It's like that's not happening. And so my father is a attorney. And he was friends with one of the attorneys uh, involved in this whole deal. And he's like, what, what the hell happened? And he said his friend was like, Mike, I don't know if this woman's crazy or not, but she went to the house uh, to try to decide where to put some furniture. She heard footsteps upstairs and knew that there wasn't, weren't any contractors there that day. And so she went to the bottom of the stairs and she said she saw at the top of the steps a man and a woman in colonial clothes having an argument and they just kind of stopped talking and turned and looked at her and she got the hell out of there. So then the lawyer's like, all right. So the lawyer starts asking around uh, <laughs> contractors and stuff and talked to painters and they were like, well, now that you mention it, we heard banging in parts of the house where we knew nobody was working um, there was an electrician who said that he was there checking out the wiring. Um, and it's like an old house. Like it had like, like cloth, you know, like on the wires, like not even like, wow. um, like right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and he's going through all this stuff. And he said, while he was working, he was explaining everything to their daughter. She was following him around asking him, what, what are you doing here? What are you doing there? 
And then he came to find out they didn't have a daughter. There was just oh my a God. little girl following <laughs> oh, him no. around the house, asking him what he was Jesus. doing. Jesus. <laughs> okay, so, so take some notes quickly. You never go to fucking Rhode Island. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I love the idea though of like she's hearing these noises. She goes and she sees two colonial ghosts. I love the idea that they're having an argument. They look down and you're like, do you mind? We're like, yeah. right. Hobby. In the middle of something. Use me. Yeah. I like the idea that like a competing realtor hired actors to do this. To <laughs> sabotage the deal. That's Very pretty Scooby good. Do. <laughs> That's yeah. the movie. <laughs> well, there you go. See, ironically, so there you go. Last time around, we, we were, while leaning towards the sort of more Witches of Eastwick vibe, we kind of felt like we didn't want to, like I said earlier, paint Rhode Island in a certain way. We went with the slightly sweeter, we went with the me, myself, and Irene element of it. I kind of feel like maybe we did a disservice that the Witches of yeah. Eastwick slash The Conjuring seems to be a much Are more... you inferring that we got it wrong? <laughs> well, that doesn't sound possible. It's highly that scientific like podcast. <laughs> That's not what we do here. So uh, so it seems it seems things do get a little bit more messed up. So like uh, Matt was saying, they, this does tell the story of the Warrens, the Warrens being famous enough here in the States that even my missus was like, oh, yeah, the Warrens, they did the Amityville Horror and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, so this just tells one of their uh, official cases, hence the true story of it, or also hence the fact that it launches a franchise, because I think it follows oh. a bunch of the cases that they do. Um, Conjuring right. 2, the Age of Ultron, sure, yeah. <laughs> First, uh, two Conjuring too furious um but yeah, so so matt like considering the stories you've just told you you just kind of like a a healthy skepticism when it comes to stuff like this or an open mind or a believer how would you kind of boil it down i don't know i mean i'm more agnostic i'm just kind of I, I like i i don't know um but i enjoy hearing about it uh i have no first-hand experience um but yeah i don't know that I've I've never heard of a situation. I I have no experience with a situation that has proved or disproven, you know, anything. I think that people are we're we, we're all energy. We're all spiritual beings having a physical experience, and then that energy doesn't go away. So I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I I think it's I think it's all just good fun, really. Yeah. From from my purview. Well, the fun, the fun of this movie starts uh, right at the beginning. Well, after we get the five minutes of Annabelle, just, mm -hmm. you know. The, cold, the that, cold open, yeah. Yeah, the cold open is Annabelle just messing with these people. And when they are. Which is a real doll. Did you, did yeah. you look into this? I it's, did. It's it was a, a raggedy, raggedy Ann doll. Raggedy yeah. Ann doll, which is honestly uh -huh. a little bit scary. Uh -huh. I was going to say, that's way yeah. creepier. That Like, the doll in this movie is like. And to be fair. Somebody had, designed right. a scary doll. I think it's, it's like the It remake. It's like you yeah. can't. The, the clown can't be scary. The clown has right. to look like a yeah. clown. Yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. I think we'd all admit that we've had worse roommates, though. Right. <laughs> oh yeah i would there are some roommates i would definitely take annabelle yeah. over from yeah 100 there i mean from the very beginning they're making poor choices like for the example okay this demon doll is knocking on our door and messing with us and we've just been taught but they go you know what i'm going to deal with it i'm going to throw it in the trash directly outside my building no sure. no drive it to another state bury it just throw it in the it. fucking pacific ocean set fire to it do something don't just put it in the trash outside it's gonna but it off. Patrick Wilson's <laughs> character has a line that immediately it's like, you see, the spirits, it's like stepping in gum. <laughs> and that's oh, when I that fucking was, lost it. I'm like, oh, that, boy. that was so funny. <laughs> I, I actually, finally, a metaphor I understand. <laughs> I was actually laughing from the beginning because when they threw it out and then later there's the knocking at the door, this is how my brain works. I couldn't help but think the image on the other side was just this doll with like a dirty banana peel and like <laughs> it's foot in a KFC bucket. Like you assholes. Yeah. Why are you doing this? I couldn't stop laughing immediately. I'm like, that's, that's true. Okay. Better movie. Better, Better movie. movie. Um, but when they like, for example, so Ron Livingston um, and uh, Lily Taylor turn up uh, with their five daughters. Good God, man. Um, the very, within 90 seconds of being in this house have found a murder basement. And there's, and they're like, they've one, found the murder basement, two, investigated it. But what I love is that so this is twice now we've had a murder basement in a movie. And in both cases, the man has gone, ooh, 
extra square footage for the house. Mm -hmm. Of course, <laughs> yeah. obviously, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it showed him in Barbaria, too. Yeah. That was the it's whole... Better like, return ooh, on investment. Yeah. That's all the men are ever thinking about. That's good. Finally, we can have more kids. <laughs> we could put our other three daughters in the fucking basement. This is the kind of movie, too, that it's just got the certain vibe to it where they introduce, I hate this, but when they introduce like the family dog, you just go, Oh no. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that's what Mrs. was saying. So Mrs. like, I don't know what's wrong with white people, but like, it's like, you know, the dog is saying hell no and is shaking and is sitting outside and everyone else is like, Oh, I guess everything's fine in the house. We go, come on, children, go and pick your favorite haunted mm -hmm. bedroom. And then, yeah, yeah. The, within, within the first, what uh, night, the dog gets turned inside out, basically, or just it's dead. Which in movie in movie rules means everybody's screwed, usually. If the dog dies, then no one's making it. So in this particular case, it, yeah, and it just game, gets crazier huh? from there. Yeah. Will, what, like you are, you know, I'm because you were making fun of this movie the entire time. You were. Oh, Will, you're muted, buddy. <laughs> oh, sorry. That's uh, the haunted dog next door, and yeah. I have to mute my mic from time to time. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I I was laughing out loud a couple times. Um, other than that, I was pretty bored. Thing is, like, it just kind of. I think it doesn't help that I know too much about the real Ed and Lorraine, um, and my own knowledge of them kind of like bleeds into this movie. So, I, I'm not taking it that seriously at any point in time. But uh, yeah, it, it's it's one of these movies where people are kind of making like dumb decisions throughout the entire film and they have to in order for horror movie tropes to happen like when ron livingston first discovers the uh the basement and goes into it the first thing he asks for is like a book of matches but then later on the next morning he's got a flashlight and in my head i'm like why did you just but ask they, for, why are you asking just, for matches they just moved in all like, their oh. stuff is in boxes exactly. but i'm like oh he asked for matches he yeah. asked for matches because the screenwriter needed there to be matches yeah. in the basement later and I, it's hard for me to get out of like things like that where i'm like all right people aren't asking for the logical things because a screenwriter needs certain things to happen it was the 70s man yeah i was like we're, flashlights were invented back then right like you know <laughs> yeah but you, you just uh, like yeah for okay. maybe for the wealthy <laughs> <laughs> and also every ghost in this movie like all every instance of haunting is like done like like i was telling you guys i like like evil dead and like suspiria and i i like it when the supernatural stuff is trying to kill you in like movies like this where it's like it just tugs on the girl's leg it hides behind a door i'm like is it just trying to be spooky like it's it's like it's just more annoying people like they're banging on cabinets i'm like i don't i don't understand what the ghosts are trying to do like they're just trying to like this will scare them guys watch this like well, i guess that's i don't know i can't thing. There's, there's, this is a, like the Avengers of demonic, because demonic, there's the demon, right, presence, but then there's also the witch is part like the demon because she then murdered the, but then she's also created other ghosts by I, I them could not follow. Their, this yeah. is what I mean, because there's the little boy that appears in the murder toy if you turn the key and look in the mirror. But, but he, he's different than the first yeah. demon, and then there's a witch that was... Or well, I think witch it's... trials in 1864, which that doesn't make sense, but <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I don't know. I well, I mean, I I look at it more like um, like something like The Shining, uh, where, I mean, first of all, look, if Evil Dead Two or Suspiria had taken place in Rhode Island, we'd be doing a different movie this <laughs> this episode. I'm just saying, for sure, <laughs> for sure, yeah, like, yeah. You know, I'm not I'm not putting The Conjuring up with. Right. It's not in my top. Oh 10. no, no, for sure. I'm not. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not um, buying that. It's yet. not even your but, top ten Rhode Island movies. <laughs> but I don't think it's it's. I don't find it. Div it's this woman, the the witch. She did this offering to Satan or whatever, and then that opens a door, and then things come through the door, which is why it. I don't find it that hard to, uh, to 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 go along with that idea. Like with The Shining, it's like it. People come in and then that's why there's the woman in the tub or the, 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 you know, the bartender who, you know, God knows what the bartender did, but like the last groundskeeper, right. he murdered the girls, you know, it's, mm -hmm. there's always a, it's, it's, there's a, there's a great, um, I'm trying to think there's, there's, I've heard this other times in other stories, but there, there's a great Stephen King, um, short story called crouch end 
where it talks about like our dimension being like a leather ball and it's protecting us from the other dimensions. But like there are certain spots where the leather's kind of rubbed away a little bit. And then there's places mm -hmm. like this town, Crouch End, where there's actually a hole and things have come through. Mm -hmm. Um so I could I I buy that I think it, it it's a sound explanation why the this witch she does the most horrible thing you know as a sacrifice to Satan and now it's it opens this door and now this place is cursed because of it. I just Simple. yeah I don't think from Simple. that point it just it's it's just like the it's a full house literally but it's like I'm yeah. just there's every kind of thing going on and I I, I must mm -hmm. like that's why I was thinking watching it with Mrs. because. You know, Will's texting us, this movie's boring. And I go, you are insane. <laughs> it's not boring. I mean, yes, it might it not be your cup of tea, but every five to eight minutes, there's some other thing happening. And it's yeah. just, it just keeps ramping up and it keeps going. And I will give credit, like James Wan does like to move the camera in very yeah. interesting yeah. ways. And like in this particular case, especially like even just from moving in, like when they're moving the family into the house, they're just the way he's moving the camera. I go, all right, I'm very entertained. Yeah. And it reminded yeah. me of like, I know I mentioned this on the text. So it reminded me of like Mike Flanagan doing um, the haunting of Hill house. Like he, he's, he's not afraid to, you know, hold that camera a little bit longer or focus on kind of nothing just to get your mind going or pop in a little hidden ghost here and there. I, but does, which is it. There was lots of framing in this movie where you're like, all right, something's going to happen yeah. in the mirror. All right. Something's going to happen in the cupboard. It's very much like, Sticking some arrows in the background. Yeah. You ready? You ready? It's so. the shot where someone opens a medicine cabinet, looks in there for a bit, and then closes it because you know sure. something's going to pop in the mirror, and but then there's nothing there. But I think this is also, it it suffers from now a decade of other movies right. doing that. Whereas in 2013, mm -hmm. there was a, it it it's it's look, there's no doubt this movie leans heavily into the jump scare stuff. Um, and definitely so, like look no further than the budget and then the profits. And yeah. then it's like, okay, then we got to yep. keep making movies oh, yeah. that do this, mm -hmm. you know, but there Which is a, there is an element to that. I think is now lost now because it has become cliche, just like with anything, uh, that trends is once you get that framing and you you're now now you're building tension of like oh fuck oh fuck something's gonna jump out like oh shit you know <laughs> so it's 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 i think it's it time hasn't been it, time isn't kind to certain types of horror movies and comedy movies sure. you know yeah. yeah i still think i mean i i get what you mean but i i, I appreciated the way that this one looked you know, like I yeah. like that. The, oh, it, yeah. I mean, when the, the, that, the hand that is when, a positive when she's yeah. on the stairs and the hands come out and clap. Oh, I'm yeah. Like, this is fucking just beautiful. Cuts. Oh, yeah. that's great. The, yeah. the other one where she's playing, uh, she's initially playing the hide, the uh, blindfold hide and seek, hide and clap. Right. Oh, and um, that's the bit that shat my, like, I got all goosebumpy was when it was the yeah. arms came out of the cupboard. Yeah. You know, just the freaky mm -hmm. arms. Yeah. Like, oh no. It's like, good. I'm... It did. It, 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 it hits those notes and you're right. I think for its time, it was doing something new that has then kind of been watered down since then. Like everyone, you can only film certain things a certain way to scare people. And because right. people have this a certain is, expectation for it. This, this movie is animal house. And then now we've we've gotten a decade worth of uh, you know right. uh, I'm trying to think of a good one <laughs> like, like Revenge of the Nerds and stuff and stuff well yeah you, you of the Revenge of the Nerds or or hot trip hot chili or I'm trying to think of some of the canon film knockoffs <laughs> oh god yeah <laughs> ski Baby school love. ski patrol yeah 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 hot dog hot hamburger dog. the movie yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. oh yes yeah exactly. Yeah, I will say like that that is one of the positives. Is this movie looks great. Like when we did the the crazies, my biggest complaint is how washed out and kind of generic that looked. That suffered from yeah. like the 2000s. Yeah. Everything's got to be bluish gray for some reason. Just um, this doesn't the, have the, that problem. The, this the this movie filter. does not. Yeah. No, it looked great. It yeah, looked like an homage to a 70s style film. Like it had that kind of little Spielberg tinge to it. Very mm -hmm. minimal, but I I mm. I enjoyed yeah. it. Like I, I hadn't seen it in forever. And that's one of the things we talk about, Matt, is like the beauty about this podcast is you're kind of forced to watch things with fresh eyes and not be as subjective sometimes. 
So it was <laughs> kind of like, you can kind of put yourself in there and be like, oh, that's what this was like watching this in 2013. But it, it was like, a, it was watching it fresh. Like it felt new. And even though I'd seen it before, it was, it I was, also think it elevates this movie crawl. is that it's, um, it's not just, um, just random people. It's Patrick Wilson, yeah. Vera Farmiga, Lily Taylor, Ron Livingston. It's actors that we're familiar with. And it's like, even with the younger actors, it's like with they're familiar, if you watch other movies as well, that sure. there's a lot of faces, a lot of good actors that are involved in this. And it kind of makes it feel like, okay, this is more than just a, you know, random people getting stabbed in the in the forest kind of horror. This is like, all right. And then the fact, again, you're leveling in the fact that this is just one case, you know? So I, I didn't, and it didn't take away the, the edge of it for me because, you know, part of me is like going, well, we know that these people, the Warrens go on to investigate multiple things. We see mm-hmm. that they're investigating things beforehand. So we know they're going to make it, but yeah. it's still, it still shot me up pretty good. At the end of the movie, they just go, I think we're going to need a bigger crucifix. <laughs> so, <laughs> the Warrens will return in Hammityville 3. <laughs> yeah. I it's, uh, yeah, I, I, I do like the approach of the story of where the Warrens are kind of like, this is a weird oh, way to phrase it, but sort of like the man with no name kind of thing. Like, it's not their story. It's the story of this family. They're just a through line. Yeah. Um, and like, you know the people who come and solve the problem but they're not the main characters necessarily and that seems to be the conceit of the franchise i would have liked this more. they show up into someone else's story i would have liked this more if in this movie they were like known Mm -hmm. like shysters and criminal like like fakes but then they are then thrust into this very real situation that they're like oh no like we've been we've been out ghosted yeah oh shit this shit shit just got real so to speak you know there is there is a movie that's like that i can't remember what it was but it's a movie that's a documentary style about this guy who is three amigos that's the one (laughs) yes that's the premise chase yeah Yeah. (laughs) we're out of our our deaths yeah yeah (laughs) that's the one um but but yeah go for it Oh no! I was just gonna. I was just gonna finish my thought. That's, there one there's like doc- later in the series where Annabelle becomes like the good guy, and they got to work together to fight. <laughs> and then, like, yeah. a more <laughs> evil way at all. Yeah. Yeah. Annabelle versus Megan versus Malignant. Well, know. now uh, hang on. Yeah, <laughs> I'm putting together a team. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. I might be into this now. Yeah. There's there's a lot going on in this movie. Um, there's the the other sort of weird part is they definitely play up the fact that Lorraine's character, that's Vera Farmiga's character, is is clairvoyant. And um, they, she's got like, the shinning. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. She's got. She has her sort of like her weird thing, and I. It's for me the whole religious kind. It's something that Will texted actually. You were like, "Oh, thank goodness that Catholicism is the right the right religion to take down these particular demons." It's like, a, it's a, yeah, it's a good <laughs> thing they weren't you know Muslim or this that and the other. And I was like, I hadn't thought about it like that until you said it, and I'm like, all right. That's a fair cop. That only these demons are. We react to the Christian people, you know. I'm Get like, me okay. Russell Crowe. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Some would call the Pope's exorcist. That's right. The best exorcist, as we know. It's my exorcist. But like, it it does creep me out. I mean, that that the whole religious aspect of it does lend something to. And I guess it's just the way I was brought up. I went to Catholic school and stuff like that. I mean, like Matt, what about like with you? Like to Will's to Will's point. The convenience factor of these demons are allergic to Catholicism, you know, element to it. I've never really thought about it like that. How do you sort of like, how do you see that sort of situation? Does it, does it stick out to you the way it does to Will? No, I don't feel like it's a new, I like, what happens if you hold a star of David up in front of Dracula? I don't know. (laughs) You you hold up a cross and vampires don't like it. It's, It's just... It doesn't bother bother me at all. I, you know, I mean, The Exorcist is, you know, the greatest horror movie of all time, and it's lousy with priests. Um, mm-hmm. <laughs> Jesuit priests are the only order of Catholic priests that perform exorcisms, so you got to have one on hand for your technical advisor. And then, if you're lucky enough to be <laughs> William Friedkin, you're going to put, you know, <laughs> Bill O'Malley in the movie. Um. So yeah, I mean, I it it adds a, a sense of realism to it or legitimacy. It's also it's just it, I don't know. It's part of the it's part of the story. I've never that 
I don't it, it, it would be a interesting movie, uh, albeit it would come off like like a, you know, Zucker Brothers parody if there was some other religion fighting demons. It's just kind of mm -hmm. a, a standard. Yeah. We do things you know, a little differently. Why here. can't we have the same <laughs> yeah, thing? Yeah, like, like a priest, yeah. a rabbi, uh, like a mullah, well, all like team sure. up, take down ghosts. I mean, I they, think you're priest, describing rabbi, John Carpenter's. A, yeah, yeah. <laughs> walk into John a haunted Carpenter's. house. Yeah, yeah. A Scientologist. Um, <laughs> walk yeah, into a I, haunted bar. Yeah, and I, I, I fully movie. admit. Yeah. yeah, I fully admit this is just kind of like a me thing. Like I. Yeah. Every all my roommates completely disagree with me. Um, I it's something that seems to bother just me, um, which is fine. And I think I might give The Exorcist a pass because, uh, <laughs> be, because I I'm a little bit more because fond it of doesn't my... fit your strange yeah. narrative. Right. So there yeah. we go. No, <laughs> it doesn't. Yeah, it doesn't work in my argument. So I accept yeah. it. No. Um, is it? I'm not. I, I don't, I, I'm also. I'm just curious. Is is it? I don't. I don't want to. I don't know you guys. I don't want to like poke a hornet's nest. Bring it. Is it because this is a popular movie that you don't like it? Is that what it is? No, I. Will's I don't just think weird. So. Will. Yeah. Will has I, okay. I, very yeah. specific. Yeah. Like he loves old classic Hollywood. He loves Hollywood movies. He knows a lot. He knows more about movies than other than either of us. But at uh -huh. the same time, he doesn't like the movie Twister. He, he, he <laughs> famously <laughs> hates Major Pain. Hates Major Pain. Tara, just like, did yeah. not like Major Pain. Uh, <laughs> Twister, Twister. I might need to watch again because I might have just been in a funky mood when I rewatched that. Um, but uh, certain but, movies, uh, Matt, with... they can just they they piss Will off, yeah. and he just digs his heels and he goes, "Nope, this and, movie is garbage." I'm literally not trying to be like that kind of film guy. It's just, you know, it's my honest reaction. But with The Exorcist, the reason why I'm a little bit more fond of it, um, I like three a lot better. But the reason why I like, I, I give the first one a bit of a pass. My film professor was Terry, uh, um, oh my God. Gilliam. Right now. Yeah, Terry Gill. No. Um, <laughs> um, oh my God. I can't believe I'm spacing on his last Terry name. Terry Bam Bam Gordy. From <laughs> Terry, <laughs> Terry Funk. Yes. No, uh, <laughs> He was the assistant director on uh, on Exorcist, and he was my uh, film professor. And so we we talked to him all. He worked with Freakin a lot, and so we got all great like behind the scenes stories of uh, working on Exorcist. And he had what a miserable experience that was for him. He loves talking about it, but oh, yeah, that's I love some of the behind the scenes stuff on that. That Freakin was just a cuckoo banana pants. Like yeah, it, it the basically where... ended their working relationship. He was just yeah. like, uh, he's like, uh, Bill, I love you, but I can't work with you. Firing, <laughs> firing shotguns on set to get people's genuine reaction like, of being scared. I'm like, I bet that bloody works. <laughs> so... Yeah, and he, and like I said, he had so many. So because there, I have like affection for Terry and he was my film professor. I'm a little bit more lenient towards exercise. I like it a little bit more for that reason. Had had I not known him, I don't know if I'd be as lenient, what? but you almost picked that for our state of fear episode, no? Exorcist three? Oh I yeah, I came I close to picking because I really do like Exorcist. Yeah. You can get me with like a supernatural horror film. Like it can happen like I said, Suspiria is like one of my favorite horror films in years. Like it can't happen. It's just Oh you mean uh, the remake? Yeah, I was about to say, yeah, I, the, both the of them. I like both of them, but I like mm. the remake a lot. Yeah, both are good, but um, well, you but, say uh, you know, yeah. The Exorcist, and you mentioned Poltergeist earlier as well. I'd say this, movie, I do like Poltergeist quite a lot. This movie yeah. is is kind of yeah. like a bit of Exorcist, bit of Poltergeist, sort yeah. of thrown together with a sort of bit of demon stuff in the middle. And it, it <laughs> I like about it as well as it doesn't go too hard. And I, what I mean by that is like they don't try to go over the top, it feels very practical in Definitely. a lot of ways. It's sort of which I guess makes it scarier because we've talked about it before when something is too CGI laden, when they bring too many visual effects in, it can kind of pull you out. And what visual effects they did use, I found quite effective. Like for example, uh, when the laundry blows off the line and it goes around that figure, yeah, that's not that there. Cool. And I was like, yeah. all right, that was well, well played, well done. Yeah. So like, what, did you guys sort of, how do you guys feel about like, you know, the, the way that it was approached, the practical nature of, the, of a lot of the, uh, the way it was shot? I definitely think it, I mean, it, 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 it certainly grounds this, the movie more for sure. And this is one of those things too. It's like, I, I know I've seen it, but there are certain scenes, the way it's shot and framed that definitely made my skin crawl. Like, yeah, even though I knew something was coming, like I'd seen it, but it was like, Oh, this is like, this is getting, getting the goose bumpy. You know, I, I yeah. felt it. I like, got that like four or five times. of so just like, Ooh. yeah, yeah. you Here get that. Go. You get that every day. <laughs> <laughs> That's by like, but like, uh, like Matt, any particular scene for you that really stood out? 
Uh, I mean, I feel like we mentioned them. The 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 hands right. clapping and the you know when the, when the 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 sheet hits the the figure that you didn't know was there. Um, it's just there's. Uh, I also like when uh Lorraine kind of goes into her state and it's it's you see like her um uh, I guess I don't know what what to call it but when she's observed like when her her spirit self is now observing the room mm -hmm. uh I find that very effective um you know I mean it's just and then Patrick Wilson just constantly furrowing his brow yeah. just somehow is perfect for that character because he's just you know ed warren should just be this kind of what are we doing what, what's going on all right hold on i i got some holy water i'll bless a priest gave this to me i'm gonna put it in a case now and we're good you know it's it's the that obviously they don't play that up but right right it, they, they, that's the way that the the real Warrens come off in like archival footage of just like it's just like I don't worry my wife knows how to take care of this and then she just comes in this you know 60 pound woman who's just like there's a presence here you know? <laughs> so I, 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 I enjoy those aspects of it you know well yeah. I like the, there was the scene along those lines then there's the bit I quite like when they go down to the basement they're shooting it on like Super 8 or they're shooting it on film. So mm -hmm. we're seeing it through that medium. And the, the only sound we're getting is from um, his directional mic as well. So it's like we're deliberately being sounds are being removed from what we're experiencing. We're only getting what yeah. is going That's on cool. the, the, the film kind of thing. I thought that was a quite inventive way of like ratcheting up the tension yeah. of that scene as well. But at the same time making it seem, oh, a bit and, like saying silly at the same time. And I, I like too in this movie, you could you get them in other similar movies, it would be like one person experiencing this and then trying to explain it. And everyone's like, ah, you're crazy. But in this, it, like it happens in front of everyone. Like they're all, they have all the cameras set up. The doors are closing. The camera's flashing. The kid's walking and they're like, hold on, let her, let, let her go, let her go. Mm -hmm. And I thought that was so, cause that was so unique. You don't normally see that. Yeah, because you do get films. the the cop character. I did appreciate yeah. the fact that Great. we got like a Rhode, Rhode Island cop, and he also has the mustache that everyone from me, myself, and Irene. Uh, <laughs> and that's so, the word of a yeah. Rhode Island state trooper. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was like rock on. But yeah, I mean, I mean, there's a bit that Will was making fun of. Like, so I want to talk about the exorcism scene at the end because I thought that was pretty good. I thought mm -hmm. there was some pretty legit stuff going on there, some great practical things going on, excellent sound effects, the way the, the chair turned upside down that was and super cool, sat, yeah. sat on the roof. But also, like, you know, there was a little bit of Chekhov's shotgun uh, that came into play. And then, yeah, Will, Will, tell us about, you know. Uh, I'm so, well, once again, I'm, I'm literally, I'm just trying to watch the movie and be objective. But when they set the shotgun down and then later when the shotgun is floating in the air and it shoots at them, I couldn't help it. I just started yeah. laughing like really hard to the point where I missed part of the movie. Like I was just like, I couldn't believe I just saw this Looney Tunes. And you're ass. our resident <laughs> ghost expert. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was just so that just that scene, there was yeah, a couple of times like in the movie where I just started cracking up where I'm like, I okay. Like I, I don't I think what it was was the line, there's a line earlier where they're talking to that cop and the, the one guy's like, What are you gonna do? Shoot a ghost? And then that scene happens. I'm like, wait, but ghosts can shoot us? That's not fair. Like, <laughs> hold on. Yeah, <laughs> so right. I just in my brain, I it just twisted it around to be something silly. But I like the way it was shot. Like it, it was shot extremely well. Hmm. And um, I sound actually like you know as well. Yeah. Oh, the sound design in this movie is great. Like you know, that's that's one thing about James Wan. I'll say is like his filmmaking. You guys have mentioned his camera movements and stuff are uh, just excellent. Uh, sound design is always on point in his movies so like he's he's a fantastic like on a technical level as a director like there's a lot i admire about that but yeah i'm trying not to be too negative about the movie oh, like, it's I, fine you can have I, opinions I, I know i twist you psychopath yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i will i will rewatch it i hadn't seen it in years and then i rewatched it i think i was in a funky mood and uh just gotta get ready for twisters have, I, don't, I don't know where we found this in a state sale or a, a goodwill we have a framed picture in hanging in our bedroom of um uh helen hunt and um who, who is it bill, bill, bill paxton bill paxton 
<laughs> just like arm in arm posing for the picture. <laughs> it's incredible. It's hanging on our uh, on our bedroom wall. I'm so That's jealous. amazing. Yeah, yeah. 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 I love Bill Paxton. Feeling. So. Yeah. <laughs> what <laughs> about a mural? No. What about you, Matt? That final scene, the the exorcism scene. How did that go down with you? Because for me, I thought it was pretty pretty good. Yeah, I like I like everything about this movie. I mean, it's it's um, I and 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 it's it's I find it's again, it's tricky when you're doing something like an exorcism that you you're now it's like you might as well be doing a um farewell scene at an airport in Casablanca, you know, right. because yeah. you've got some stiff competition. Uh, mm -hmm. we, we've we been here before and we've seen this before and I thought that they yeah. I mean nothing can touch the exorcist but I feel like they pulled off a very effective and entertaining uh, climax of this movie because it's yeah. it's one of those things like I, I don't throw a movie out completely if the ending is unsatisfying an ending can ruin the story but I, it won't ruin the whole movie for me like um like uh, what was it, Nighthouse? Um, I found the the ending unsatisfying, but everything else up to that point, I was like, okay, they didn't stick the landing. I can't throw the baby out with the bathwater, but it 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 goes from a four to a three, you know. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, but I think that the Conjuring, I was like, I like the beginning, the middle, and the end. I like. Candyland was a, a a movie I just saw recently where the beginning was so well done and then it gets a little clunky in the middle and then the end I'm like because ah. at a certain point it's just like we know who the killer is and we basically know why she's doing it and then we just stop being interesting with our characters and our story and now she's just randomly killing people and I'm like yeah, it's it's it had a lot more potential when it started, but it's like it that first act is still a great first act. I don't think mm -hmm. anything gets spoiled by a bad ending, but I don't think that was the case here. I, I, I loved the I, I really enjoy this movie throughout. Uh, there was a lot of there was a lot of pressure in that final scene because one, you got the mum who's haunted and they're trying mm -hmm. to 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 get the demon out. You've then got the mum as a possessed mom trying to murder her youngest daughter, mm -hmm. but the other daughter outside- Which is a... always a bummer. Yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> yeah. always a downside. Um, you got the other daughter outside with all the murder birds, you know, just living in her own, in her own uh -huh. Hitchcockian sort of nightmare. And then we've also had that their own daughter back in Connecticut or wherever they live is being sort of like attacked by the malevolent force and Annabelle at the same time <laughs> that I'm like, legitimately lots of danger going on. So I was pretty much edge of my seat for that one. I'll give them credit. Yeah. I do always I, think of the the opening scene in Scary Movie Two with that exorcism with James Woods and uh, <laughs> like, Leslie, that's how you that's how you do it. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's right. I was I, just, I was about to say Leslie Nielsen, but no, that's repossessed. Oh yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> wow, oh, God, that's God. a deep cut for you. That was a good. Um, one. That's great. I uh, yeah I that was the other thought I had during this movie is they have their their um, demon museum of all their most haunted stuff, yeah. which of mm -hmm. course is protected by a lock and uh, is in the same yeah. house where their young daughter is. I'm like, yeah, there nothing will go wrong. It might as well be a velvet. You guys are geniuses. Yeah. Yes. Well, that's that's that, a, it's okay. They that, have somebody that. come by and bless the super, you know, haunted murder room uh, that, once a month. That's what I mean. So it's fine. The, the end of the movie, right? So we okay. get like this great, fantastic, I will give great credit, that whole exorcism scene, the, the reality, the practical effects, the blood, everything fantastic. And then it's almost, I don't know if it was a note from the, the, the studio or it's just James Wan, but we've been given this sort of like, you know, almost two hours of just nightmare. And then we get that, just that two minute scene of everything's fine now. The sun's out, everyone's outside the house, everyone's <laughs> hugging and smiling. I've been in therapy yeah. for so long. This is not, everyone's just like, all right, everything's great. And then we go back home to live in our own murder house with the murder fucking doll that's living right there. I'm like... Who would even live in that house? Like, well, so you obviously you convert the basement. I mean, <laughs> extra no square brainer. footage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Have you uh, seen any of the other ones that came after this then, Matt? Oh, yeah. I'm sure I've seen them all. I mean, I didn't see The Nun 2. Um, Nuns on the Run. <laughs> right. <laughs> None, the Nun 2, Back in the Habit. That was it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
Did they make more than one Annabelle movie? They made yes. three, I think. Yeah, I think so. I definitely saw the first one. I mean, it's it, this this thing just turned into the MCU, where I'm just like, I don't even know what yeah. which one is which. Um, but I like that. I that I like the the second Conjuring's good, where they go to England, and then um, the third one. I can't even remember what happens in the third one. Oh, I like think that's it. the one where they go into VR and they meet Lawnmower Man. I think that's the, uh, <laughs> yeah. that's the third one. Hell yeah. yeah. Okay, so here the, we go. Yeah. So there's more. So there's The Conjuring, then came Annabelle, then The Conjuring 2, then Annabelle Creation, The Nun, Annabelle Comes Home, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, and then The Nun right. 2. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's the best subtitle ever. And The Devil Made the, Me the, Do It. The La Llorona one. It was oh, right. That's another one. one that's, oh my good lord. Wasn't that Paranormal Activity? Shit. I don't know. No, I, I don't know. No. Yeah. I, I, I told like, you guys over the. I, I, told you I guys do wonder the though if right. after they made this movie, they screened it in the studios like, oh, we're going to make a fuck ton of these. Like, so they had to well, tweak it, the it's ending. It's like and, Matt said earlier. It's yeah. a budget of $20 million and it goes on to make 320 million. It's fucking wild. And we know that movie studios are really original and inventive and definitely not mm-hmm. there just to make money. So this one time they decided they were going to make a franchise. Like, we'll do it <laughs> once and never again. Yeah, well, no. I'm sure that was part of the pitch where cuz cuz they they don't want to they're like what's the tentpole? What's the, the it needs to be mm-hmm. a thing. So it was like, well, I'm pitching you Ed and Lorraine Warren. So it's like if this goes, then we got the Amityville. Then they they do the thing mm. in England. Then they got this other thing. They they got a whole, whole room full of fucking movies right. that we All can make. Toys. Every every right. little cursed item is you know we could spin this into a series. We're gonna be on Netflix. We're gonna. I mean that's <laughs> it's it, that's how these things get. Like it always makes me think of um, if you've ever seen Siskel and Ebert review Predator, they both hate mm. it. Yeah. And the thing that Roger Ebert says with so much disdain, he goes, It's this is just Rambo meets Alien. And it's like, that sounds like a fucking amazing movie. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. you're you're saying it like, oh, can you believe this? They just did Rambo meets Alien. I'm like, that is one hundred percent probably how they sold the fucking thing. They yeah. walk in the room and go, It's it's Rambo versus meets Alien. They're like, here's fifty million dollars. Arnold go. is the final girl. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, I, mean, look, I, we, I can't can't argue with the numbers. I'm here looking at uh, the sequel, uh, which they made uh, 2016, budget 40 million, so they doubled the budget. Um, but the box office again, 320 million dollars. People mm. like this stuff. Uh, so so yeah, I can't can't argue with it. Um, the fact that it's that I didn't know they go to London. I might actually have to watch The Conjuring too. Um, I'm kind of all in now. Uh, I'm definitely gonna have to watch Annabelle when my wife is in another country, though, because there is she's just no, no fucking way. Um, one thing, so uh, Ryan will. I mean, I definitely know Matt would. Matt's a big fan of this movie. First of all, would you like? Is this one of those movies you tell people to watch? I, I feel like a lot of people have already seen this movie. I mean, I'm not gonna go onto a deep dive and watch the other nine in the series. Like this one kind of did it for me and like i said it doesn't really do anything different because it was so original at at that time like original air quotes um but yeah it's a it's a fun watch i i enjoyed the hell out of it it, it made my skin crawl i love stuff like that like i like i mentioned i love the the haunting of hill house i thought that did that so well in capturing like the emotional side of these people going through the this trauma which i which i really enjoyed Definitely well, recommend. Will, what about you? I mean, like jokes aside, fact you've fallen asleep through yeah. it twice. He gives it one out of well, two shotgun blasts. <laughs> <laughs> I uh I would um I, I would take into account like the type of person who's like asking for recommendation, like because I've definitely before been like, Yeah, this movie's not for me, but you might like it. So if if like this kind of supernatural horror is up your alley, I mean I think it's like one of the most well made versions of that. Like I said, James Wan is a great director. I really do like his filmmaking. So and I'm I'm very very clearly in the minority on this. So <laughs> this is one where I I would definitely be like, hey, look, it's it's not my thing, but uh, there are there's better a lot movies, of but really... it's still enjoyable. Yeah. All right. That's but also, if somebody's like, if somebody is closer to Ollie and like, I, I just don't watch horror movies. I want to like, I don't want to watch like the little like the kitty pool version of this movie, like right. a horror light. I want to watch a horror movie. What's a good one? Malibu. I would like I would probably like yeah <laughs> probably throw this one in there. 
All right, interesting. But of course, what we like to do on the podcast is to find the movie to define the state. And seeing as we do have a resident Rhode Islander here, the question really is, is to kind of get into the, the weeds about this, Matt, is, is do you feel that this is the movie? Now, because once we get into it now, we do get some scenes from Connecticut and we do get scenes from Massachusetts. But what that does teach someone like me, the non-American, is that you can drive from Massachusetts and Connecticut to Rhode Island relatively quickly. Um, so I'm like, I mm -hmm. guess they're all pretty close together. Yeah. So the question ghost about, hunters out there. <laughs> we, we don't see much of Rhode Island except for the giant haunted murder house. Yeah. But going back to what you were talking about, Matt, about the, town, the houses in your town, there are giant big murder houses around Rhode Island. So mm. do you feel like this is a better representation to the world for your state than me, myself, and Irene discuss. Um, no. Uh, I mean, it's uh, at no. I think no matter where we are in the movie, we're seeing North Carolina. <laughs> um, but I think it's a better movie than me, myself, and Irene. I I don't know that anybody, you know, talks with a you know, Rhode Island accent, like, oh, we're going to go down to, you know, Somerville Lumba. Uh, but it's, it's, mm -hmm. I, I, as a movie, absolutely. I, it, it certainly has a flavor of Rhode Island, Southern New England, um, in that, you know, right in that sweet spot of, you know, the seventies. Mm. So, I mean, it's, it's, I don't know. I don't know that there is a movie that, you know, represents Rhode Island thoroughly or well. I mean, maybe outside Providence, but even that, it's like, you know, like you say, they spend half the time at, uh, you know, just rolling around on the grass and at, at a, you know, a uh, a um, a boarding school. If you could, all right. If you were going to, you've been given the money, you've been given the option, the studios come to you as the, the arbiter of all things Rhode Island, and you were going to make a Rhode Island movie, how would you approach it? What would it be? What would you do? What's the genre? Um, Probably a romantic comedy. Uh, call it Thayer Street, which, you know, up until the basically the turn of the century was uh, the cool spot i'm sure it still is cool but it was but it's all there was a uh, as soon as as soon as the the starbucks opened up on thayer street and this was like the first place where there was i i should explain thayer street is um right next to brown university and rhode island school of design so it was it was it was when i was a kid when i was a teenager there was at one time as many as i want to say eight different record stores um and as a matter of fact at one point a sam goody opened up and it had to close because there was such a fierce loyalty to you know uh in your ear and tom's tracks and goldies and and and, and those types of places now it's it's all just you know corporate bullshit but it it, it was a place where it's like no we're gonna go to Thayer Street, we're gonna take a a, a a Ripta bus down there. We're gonna go to Spike's Junkyard Dogs. We're gonna go through cassette tapes. We're gonna, you know, buy some uh, VHS. It, it, you know, get the 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 Providence uh, Phoenix, the free newspaper, and you know, maybe go see a band that night at uh, Lupo's Heartbreak Hotel, or you know, it's it's, it's just so that would be the perfect setting. The late eighties, early nineties would be the perfect, you know, period and have, you know, trips to Newport Creamery and drinking an awful awful and going to Dell's lemonade and getting yourself a frozen lemonade and it's like a, a coffee Rhode milk. Island there's high a, there's a lot of I was gonna say get John Cusack on board. Yeah. Yeah. High fidelity <laughs> slash almost famous with a bunch of with yeah. a nice like, scoop of Rhode Island on top. There you go. With a there sprinkle of dazed and, and confused. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sign me up. All right, so yeah, Will, Will, Ryan, what about you guys? You know, we 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 feel like because we you, you know, memory, we all remembered uh, the Witch of Eastwick win winning until I went back and re-listened to our podcast and realized we oh. didn't. So we went with me, myself, and Irene. What about you guys? Do you uh, do you reckon that the the Conjuring deserves to get the crown for Rhode Island, or are you still sticking with 
the moustaches and sort of like a little bit of transphobia or like you know other sort of things that happened in uh, not enough really um <laughs> yeah can never have now enough. hear me out if you get the three sons from uh me myself and irene and then put them in this uh Hungry. exorcism type story <laughs> with all of their math mathematics and acumen i think i think you got something <laughs> i'm way i'm way more into that idea yeah anthony anderson <laughs> yeah. and then yeah the other two yeah. brothers that's and... the thing yeah i mean I, yeah i i i don't are i definitely don't argue that the conjuring is a superior film in every way but I still think the that the me myself and Irene still feels like more of a Rhode Island thing. I was I, thinking I, that same thing right up until the beginning of the show when Matt started telling ghost stories for about. Yeah, Rhode Island. I was gonna ask Matt like if you go on to Zillow in Rhode Island, is there like a checkbox you can hit for haunted <laughs> haunted houses well, on the market? There should be. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or like I'm sure there's ghost tours, and I'm sure it's like I'm sure every kid has like a that haunted house on the block kind of story too you know i would think they oh were for sure if they were fucking cool <laughs> yeah, yeah what, about, I, what about you Will? come on yeah i um i definitely think the conjuring is a better movie than me myself and irene i don't i don't think that's in question um because i really did not enjoy me myself and irene. yeah you made that clear um, yeah <laughs> um but yeah it's tough because we are just kind of sticking around the one house we don't really get a ton of the rest of rhode island but if we think that i i kind of like the sentiment that uh you know that's that kind of lore is so much part of living there yeah that i think maybe that's because i so how about this right let yeah. me let me throw this into the mix because i guess what i think i found quite interesting about what matt said and about what the conjuring gets into is because east coast you guys have history there I mean, America, you guys don't have that much history to a Brit. You know, we've got like thousands of years and everything's bloody haunted. But the car. history that we have is troubling. <laughs> yeah, it's <laughs> also upsetting. No. So. Nothing at all, <laughs> as we got into with Selma last time. Um, but no, is that, is that, yeah, the idea of when you get to Rhode Island or you start out on the East Coast, that there are these places that are eight, nine, ten generations of history and you've got that the history of things like the witch trials and history of things like getting away from the the Puritans or people wanting to get their religious freedom. You're, you are getting a sense of the idea that Rhode Island has a very colorful history in comparison to other states here in the US. So, I mean, like, that's why I'm kind of leaning conjuring. So yeah. what do you guys think about that? Like throwing that thing. That's fair. Yeah. There. yeah, that's fair. The conjuring uh, spooked so that me, myself and Irene could do uh, drive, drive do whatever somewhere. you'll get know. there keep yeah. going yeah. We'll, we'll come up with um, uh like yeah watermelon? I think, I don't know. well i think i think the key deciding factor is what does it say right at the beginning of the conjuring based on a true story so this is all real and uh that beats me myself Didn't the novelization of the of eraser also say that <laughs> let me let me get my novelization <laughs> So yeah, um, I mean, I no, think yeah, I'm on, yeah, I think I I'm on board with Conjuring. I think Matt's on board with yeah. uh, with Conjuring as well. So yeah, fellas, it could it be a tie on this particular yeah. case? Can I can I bring somebody around to your side? No, Matt, I, I yeah. agree. I agree. Yeah. So what about you, Will? You're sticking with me, myself, and Irene. Always, always the best. Yeah. You know. Um, no, I yeah, I think I'm gonna go with Conjuring. I think there's more to it there. Yeah. Intriguing. Intriguing. More okay. history. I agree. Okay, fine. Then we've done it right here. So we can we can do it. There's been a great challenge episode from Matt. So he's brought a new movie, yeah. he has dethroned what we had. So the official movie to represent Rhode Island here at the United States of a Movie Podcast until we come along with another movie to dethrone it. For now is The Conjuring. Uh, you can watch it is, I believe, on Max. Uh, so it is streaming yeah. right now. 2013 is The Conjuring, directed by James Wan, starring Patrick Wilson, Vera Farmiga, Lily Taylor, and Ron Livingston. Um, were there any other, very quickly, Matt, was there any other movie that you kind of were circling when it came to Rhode Island? Like you were like, maybe I'll go with that one. Or was it just straight to the country? And there was no other also rans for you? I mean, I like I said, I think Conjuring's the best movie on the list, but uh, Outside Providence would be the next on the list. And it, and it is has much more of a, you know, it's got the flavor of, working class people in Pawtucket. It's got, you know, 
written by a Rhode Islander, directed by a Rhode Islander. It's and again, like I said, I think it is maybe after Glenn Gary, Glenn Ross, and um what's uh it's probably like my third favorite Alec Baldwin performance. What's what's the one um Beetlejuice? No, 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 no. <laughs> the one with Fred Ward, uh like blue blue something. Is isn't this the one you guys were telling me about on the product? The um I think I know what you're talking about. Blue it's I'm I keep it. wanting to say blue steel, but that's Jamie Lee Curtis. Miami Blues. Miami Blues is uh, oh you have you guys not seen that movie? Mm-hmm. No. <laughs> I've only seen undercover blues. <laughs> he is so <clears throat> tremendous in that film that at the and this is just the opening. It, this is like they they should show this in like screenwriting classes because they establish who this character is immediately by the way that he's just on a plane and the plane is landing and the way he's acting on the plane, the way he's acting in the airport. And then at one point he uh, is approached by a Hari Krishna who tries to give him a flower. And uh, the, 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 the Hari Krishna says, uh, hi, what's your name? And Alec Baldwin breaks his fingers and pulls him into him and just goes, trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit. Awesome. So the second best uh, Harry Krishna in an um, uh, airport scene apart from Airplane. Where yeah. okay, I remember he's just doing just all decks everyone. everyone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the best. Yeah. So, okay, well, I'll tell you what, we'll add Outside Providence to our list for Rhode Island when we circle back around to it uh, next season. First of all, uh, Matt, I just want to say thanks so much for joining us. It really was a pleasure to yeah. have you on board. Um, <laughs> where and uh, where can people see you? Where can people follow you? And what are you up to next? Hey kids, it's your old pal Matt McCarthy. If you want to follow me on all forms of social media at McCarthy Redhead, TikTok is the place to be, and the clock is tick tocking down before it gets banned by our government. So you need to get into it now while you still can. And if you enjoy professional wrestling, listen to the We Watch Wrestling podcast. New episodes every Wednesday. We've been at it for the last 10 years. And if you're going to be in... Let's see. I'm on tour with Pete Holmes. Oh, awesome. Doing stand up comedy, and we will be in a murder house in Rhode Island. <laughs> we'll be in Florida, Dania Beach, Florida, April 12th and 13th, and Chicago, May 23rd and 25th. And uh, in two weeks, I'll be in Philadelphia at WrestleMania. So if you're around, come say oh, wow. hello. And in the meantime, join the Video Garage Patreon and get yourself your very own Video Movie Club membership card. Oh, there you go. Will's That's got right, his baby. Well. Nice. Will's got card, his. Card Hell carrying yeah. member myself. Yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> so awesome. Well, look, Matt, thanks for joining us. Uh, as yeah. always, um, like I said, you can find uh, me online as That Englishman in Texas or Ollie Pritzker. I like to do videos every Monday talking about movies. Uh, Will, you can find him online and t- TikTok especially as Entitled Willennial. Uh, he often brings old movies that you haven't talked about and encourages you to watch them. He's got a little series he does called Off the Shelf. You can't find Ryan online anywhere because like Enemy at the State, he just tries to keep out of the way of the NSA. But he does have some incredibly good designs from movies, movie posters redesigned, as well as merch that he designs from the ridiculous movies that we sometimes pitch here on the podcast. You can find them on Threadness or Etsy under Rhino Digital, R-Y-N-O Digital. First of all, just want to say thanks to anyone watching at home. Make sure you hit the subscribe, drop a comment, drop in, come to our Facebook page, our Reddit, and join in the conversation. But Matt, Ryan, Will, thanks so much for joining me on this particular episode. It really was a pleasure getting into the weeds uh, and also scaring the shit out of me. Uh, this <laughs> The last thing we need to do is to figure out where we are going next week, and we do it very scientifically by me throwing this pen. And which one do we land next to? It is Minnesota. Minnesota. Hell yeah. That's going to be an interesting mm-hmm. one. So get thinking about what we're doing. But from me, from Ryan, from Will, and from Matt, thank you for joining us for this episode of the United States of a Movie Podcast. Oh.